There are many unexplained mysteries on this earth that people and scientists cannot explain. Whether you believe these stories or not, there is no solid explanation for them. So here are five unsolved stories from around the world. During the Cold War, Russia and the Allies weren't exactly best friends. For 50 years, both sides tried to hide their failures from each other, creating a climate where you couldn't be sure what was real and what was propaganda. So when a Czech agent leaked information about a failed Russian spaceflight in December 1959, no one knew what to make of it. According to the story, Yuri Gagarin's successful 1961 trip into orbit was only one in a long line of Soviet space attempts, and merely the first one that didn't end in the pilot's gruesome death. Worryingly, there may be some evidence to this. In February 1961, two months before Yuri's flight, a listening station in Italy apparently recorded two Russian voices broadcasting the words, Everything is satisfactory. We are orbiting the Earth. A few days later, they picked up another transmission that sounded like a scream of terror, followed by empty silence. Two later recordings were also made, including one of three sobbing people saying, Conditions are growing worse. Why don't you answer? We are going slower. The world will never know about us. So what were they? Were they clever fakes? Or evidence that Russia abandoned cosmonauts to a horrifying fate? We may never know this mystery. In 1950, a Victorian man appeared in Times Square. Witnesses said he looked startled, and then a minute later he was hit by a cart and killed. The officials at the morgue searched his body and found these strange items in his pockets. A copper token for a beer worth 5 cents, about $70 in old banknotes, business cards with the name Rudolf Fence and an address on 5th Avenue, a letter sent to this address in June 1876 from Philadelphia. None of these objects showed any signs of aging. Captain Herbert Rim of the Missing Persons Department of NYPD tried using this information to identify the man. He found that the address on 5th Avenue was part of a business. Its current owner did not know Rudolf Fence. Fence's name was not listed in the address book. His fingerprints were not recorded anywhere, and no one had reported him missing. Herbert continued the investigation and finally found a Rudolf Fence Jr. in a telephone book of 1939. He spoke to the residents of the apartment building, who stated they remembered Fence and described him as a man about 60 years old, who had worked nearby. Contacting the bank, Herbert was told that Fence died five years before, but his widow was still alive but lived in Florida. He was able to contact her, and learn that her husband's father had disappeared in 1876, aged 29. He left the house for an evening walk and never returned. This story was published a number of times in the 70s and 80s, Chris Orbeck investigated this story, and his research led to the conclusion that the people and events were fictional, although he could not find the original source. But there is a twist. In 2007, a researcher working for the then Berlin News Archive found a newspaper story in the archives from April 1951, reporting the story almost as it is reported today. This newspaper archive was printed five months before the short story sourced as the origin. What's even more strange, a number of researchers have claimed to have found evidence of the real Rudolf Fence and proof of his disappearance aged 29 in 1876. In June 1936, Max and his wife Emma were on a walk when they noticed a rock with wood sticking out from its core. They decided to take the oddity home and later cracked it open with a hammer and chisel. What they found inside seemed to be an ancient hammer of sorts. A team of archaeologists checked it out, and as it turns out, the rock encasing the hammer was dated back more than 400 million years, and the hammer itself turned out to be more than 500 million years old. A section of the handle had begun the transformation to coal. The hammer's head, made of more than 96% iron, is far more pure than anything nature could have achieved without an assist from modern technology. The hammer is now on show at the Creation Evidence Museum in Texas. For more than three decades, miners at the Wonderstone Silver Mine in South Africa have been extracting out of deep rocks several strange metallic spheroids. In 1979, several were closely examined by a professor of geology at the University of Johannesburg. The metallic spheroids look like flattened globes, averaging 1-4 to four inches in diameter, and their exteriors usually are coloured steel blue with a reddish reflection. 
and embedded in the metal are tiny flecks of white fibers. They are made of a nickel steel alloy, which does not occur naturally, and is of a composition that rules out meteoric origin. Some have only a thin shell, a quarter of an inch thick, and when broken open are found filled with a strange spongy material that disintegrates into dust once it contacts with the air. What makes this mystery remarkable is that the spheroids were mined out of a layer of rock dated to be at least 2.8 billion years old. Adding mystery to mystery, the curator of the South African Museum has discovered that the spheroids he has on exhibit slowly rotate on its axis by its own power, while locked in its display case and free of outside vibrations. The stones are very well balanced and have been taken to the California Space Institute at the University of California to have tests done to determine just how well balanced it is. It turned out that the balance is within one hundred thousandth of an inch from absolute perfection. One NASA scientist reportedly said that they do not have the technology to create anything as finely balanced as this. He said the only way that either nature or human technology could create something so finely balanced would be in a zero gravity environment. There remains a case unsolved from the 1960s. It begins in Rio, Brazil. Two young men, Manuel de Cruz and Miguel Viana, both electrical technicians, were found lying dead together in the middle of a forest. Their corpses dressed in their smartest suits with lead masks covering their faces. The cause of death was undetermined. The case for suicide or murder is still out on these two. Cruz and Vienna set off on a trip to buy electronic work supplies and a new car. They were reported to have left with money for a car and stopped by at a general store to buy a bottle of water and a raincoat on the way. The man who served them told the police that the pair looked nervous and were in a hurry, checking their watches every minute or so. Their bodies were found three days later, but what's most puzzling is what they were found with at the scene. Police investigators found them in their suits and raincoats, wearing lead eye masks with no holes, the types to use against radiation, two towels and a notebook on the ground near the bodies. The money for the car was gone, as if the lead masks and suits weren't spooky enough. The instructions written in the notebook seemed to point to a very strange mystery. There in Portuguese were the words 1630, be at agreed place, 1830, swallow capsules, after effect, protect metals, wait for mask signal. Were Cruz and Vienna scheduled to meet with aliens? Or maybe even time travelers from another dimension? Reports couldn't even find out what the pills were, as their organs had rotted away. Perhaps this truly was a case of interdimensional travel that had gone